making sure everything's working correctly. OBS says I should be online. Network error, not good. Up oh, here we go. Whoa, okay. Great, let me see if I can fix the audio balance. All right. Okay, let's do this. Um, yeah, welcome back. Uh, so let's get started. So today we're here to continue sort of step two of the adventures to create that view press CLI create command. And so just to recap from those that uh, were following uh, that missed uh, last week's session. So basically view press currently does not have a create functionality, which I think is a travesty given that we just really want to provide people with some defaults that will let them get started. So as far as the basic setup, I uh, basically have a local instance of ViewPress from the official uh, Vue.js repo cloned. And so I'm currently working on the feature view ViewPress CLI create branch. And so um, oh, let's see. So I have my workspace here that includes like the local instance that uh, I'm working with as far as the package. And then I have my ViewPress local, which um, is linked to this uh, through Yarn link. Um, and then Huh, I could have sworn I disabled features. But anyways, so what we're going to do then is go ahead and run our ViewPress instance locally. So we'll see here now. Whoop. All right. So let's sort of recap what happened uh, prior. So we have this ViewPress starter kit, which is something I sort of created back then. Uh, uh, prior to sort of uh, for the further involvement in the ViewPress project, which sort of allows you to basically showcase the different features of ViewPress. Um, as we can see, there's, there's, um, it's missing a couple of things, but it's sort of the whole point is really to demo things. So uh, given that we know that now, uh, let's take a, a look also at what's going on under the hood. So currently, I just have a simple create docs uh, command, which is different from last week if you were watching where it was like a create dragons folder, but let's keep it simple with create docs. So this create command is coming uh, from the CLI. Uh, let's see, do, 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 I believe it was this one. Uh, nope, wrong one. Let's see, I want to say the CLI JS, here we go. Yeah, it's funny. You think like, oh, I, I think I remember. It was like dot command. There we go. This is much better. Option API, register core commands. Here we go. Okay, now we're good. So here is where basically the core CLI commands are being recorded. So we can see last uh, week what we did was we created a create command that took in a directory name. And then this would create the view press graph fold. And then it goes ahead and uh, we did a simple like uh, creating the directory and then just sort of like populating it. And you can see this is super ugly, um, not loving this. So I think one of the first things I want to do is actually go ahead and take this piece, put it in a file, and then we're just going to read it. So inside of the library, um, inside the view press directory, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, folder. And I'm just going to call it template. 
And so inside of this template, we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and yes, let's just write out. So this one, I'm scaffolding out the config JS. So I'm just going to call this config template JS, just so that like in the future, when people are actually going to go and like check out, you know, the co code, then when they're actually looking at config, they'll know that this is a template file and not something that you can just like accidentally edit. I can't tell you how many times I've done uh, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in here, which is great. All right. Um, yep. Okay. So to see that this actually worked, we can go ahead and test this out. Uh, so if we go, so now we're in the ViewPress local instance. So what I'm going to go ahead is I'm actually going to make this a larger piece of the um, scaffold. And so we see here, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the docs. So there's nothing here. And so using our create docs command, you'll see that it'll actually run the ViewPress create docs. Um, that we mentioned. And so it's created a directory, created a readme and such. But when we actually go ahead and check our local environment, let's see, you see that the docs was created, ViewPress was created, but config, oh, oh, ha, silly me. Oh, uh, that's right. One, need to save this. Uh, oh, I gotta turn off the formatting for now. Um, the linting is not working as well as I'd like. So for now, I'm just gonna save this. Uh, and I am not running the compilation. All right, so this is compiling now. Okay, now this should work. All right, so now we've cleared it out, no docs. Yarn create docs, whoops, typo. Okay, great. Now, if everything works as anticipated, docs, view, press, config, great, it's empty. Okay, so we know for a fact that our changes are happening um, and being updated. So the next thing we wanna do is using this write file sync, we know for a fact that it's gonna take like a string and pass it. So again, if you weren't watching last week, uh, my experience with Node tools is uh, fairly, fairly simple. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm hoping that the FS has some sort of read file sync equivalent um, is what I'm thinking, so Yep, looks like there's a read file sync, but let's go to the official docs in hopes that they actually documented things properly. Great, there's a path and options. This is good, okay. Uh, so yeah, all right. Um, so as a reminder, we are software developers, which means uh, we <laughs> it's okay if we uh, just try things and break them. So I'm just gonna try to see if this works. We're gonna go into the template, and then I just want to read this file and then read file sync. Does it say how it returns? Uh, if encoding is specified, then this function returns a string. Otherwise it returns a buffer. All right. Well, I definitely want the string. There's no doubt about that. So what kind of encoding options do I, oh, okay. I know what a string is. What encoding options do I have? All right, let's just see what happens actually. So I'll call this um, const config content and we will just log config content out to the browser or sorry, to the terminal. So again, uh, RM, RF, you know what? Let's make this a bit more programmatic and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to run rmrf docs, then run the press create because I'm going to get tired of deleting it every single time. Whoops. Okay. Uh, womp womp. Okay. I had a feeling this was going to happen. So yeah, uh, it is currently unable to reference the sort of the libraries Oh man, this is what is a little concerned about. So, okay. So basically for those who haven't, uh, and to be honest, my, my exposure to this is fairly minimum too, but when you NPM install, uh, basically it, it'll refer to the package. So in this case, you see like there's a view press core and then inside there's stuff. Um, so it looks like inside this command. So again, 
locally speaking, it was like the right idea as far as like, go back a directory and then go ahead and read it. But it doesn't work like that apparently. So, okay, so one thing we can do, right, if we're trying to reverse engineer this is we know for a fact, okay, there's a scaffold path here, which is kind of, where is this coming from? This is coming from the directory name. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's not gonna help us. We wanna refer directly to like inside the library so that when you install ViewPress, uh, it will actually come with, oh man, tricky, tricky. I wonder how people handle this normally. There, there must be a way. There must, 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 must be a way. Um, you can build a target directory destination. That's fine. Source directory. Eject. Okay, here we go. This is a good, okay. This is a great example of, so again, we want to, our goal here, the problem we're trying to solve is we want to take something that exists inside the library and then like bring it into like the actual project itself. So this actually, I just realized the eject um, might actually give us that. Um, yeah, it might actually give us what we need. Okay, so we know that it wraps the command eject. That's not as helpful, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. So now we got to look a little bit closer for the eject stuff. Wrap command eject. Where is this coming from? View press core. Okay. So if you press core, there is this inject file. Okay. Here we go. Mm hmm. Okay, require resolve catch. Okay, source resolve. Once it resolves, it parses the source. Oh, okay, let's just try that then. Um, what I'm thinking here is the read file sync didn't work as expected. Uh, that is uh, read file sync. Okay, this didn't work. That, again, that's to be expected now. But if we said the config content was, I think the syntax was require resolve. And then the view, oh, okay, this is what's a little weird. It's going inside the view press package theme default, which if we're looking at this structurally, we will see that there's actually a theme default folder in here but I'm not in this view press bit. I'm actually inside of regular view press. Oh, this is why I really wish it was named view press CLI, but again, I'm not sure how everything works and talks to each other. So let's not try to break too many things at once. So given that, Let's go ahead and try that. So view press slash template. I think that's it actually. He just requested the folder. Okay, yeah, let's try this try catch block. This is great, all right. Uh, try cons config content equals require and then Oh my gosh, something's glitching out. Okay, then once we try that and then we can catch our error. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, catch error and then console.error log error. Okay, and if should this work correctly, hopefully we can check that out. All right, let's try again. Yarn create docs. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, so cool. We're learning something new. Uh, what we are finding is that they're looking for a module name ViewPress template. And it doesn't find it because it's looking in. 
user project, Vue.js, Vue.press packages, Vue.press. Oh. OK, right. That makes sense. Because Vue.press, so it's good. I've gotten so, f OK, I've clearly gotten far enough that I've learned that the, um, all right, so we learned that the CLI.js is actually probably the, one of the key things here. Uh, because the CLI.js uh, is probably exporting a bunch of stuff. That's what at least I'm assuming. Am I wrong? Uh, CLI, CLI, async, 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 await. OK. Slightly wrong. Uh, CLI index. Oh, nope. Mm. I think I'm close, but not that close. Okay, let's go. Okay, it says it's here. I mean, th this doesn't export anything either, though. This is what I don't understand. Um, require, require, require. Oh. Okay, so okay, so here's sorry. Here, here's where my brain went. Um, so I'm thinking of this, and I went. Okay, so we know that the eject command, which we learned, uh, sort of actually lives somewhere much farther. Actually, it lives all the way over here inside of the actual at viewpress package. Uh, what we do know is that it exports async. Okay, so yeah, so it exports this. So basically saying that it's available to the um as like a as a command and it more to async, okay. Then it'll resolve it. It'll resolve it. Man. Okay. Uh but the other thing is that you'll see that the exports here, it does export the eject functionality. So knowing that, that's why I was thinking like, okay, well. We have this index.js that's basically exporting it. And we also have clearly the command that requires stack doesn't include it. So what we're thinking here, okay, so this is required core. Um, and we know that inside is looking in re register and CLI, at least that's what I'm, at least I think that's where it's looking. So I'm more inclined to put it in the CLI portion uh, but the only thing is that this is what puzzles me is that there's no obvious like exports. There's a CLI thing right here, uh, which maybe this is actually what returns all of the, you know, uh, as far as like what returns the exports as far as like setting that up. So yeah, this is requiring the util. So now we jump back and before parse, sure, sure. Yeah, here we go. Module exports is known command rep command. So this is a CLI that are importing the async function. Gosh. Okay. Trying to understand this. Just wanted to read that direct. Oh, okay. Hang on. Uh, all right. So I really don't want, I, I really feel there's so many index.js though. So this already is an export. So I am exporting this object already, right? So I do know that. So what if, okay, maybe that's part of my problem. Maybe I'm actually just trying to require the wrong thing because this one, there's no exports inside this file, but there's an export inside config template.js. I think that's what the difference is going to end up being. So let's try this again. Uh, not much better. Okay. Nope. That's good. Const config content is not defined. What? Unhandled promise rejection. Uh, is it because it's an async? That might be why. I mean, when we go to the eject command, let's 
see. Nope. It just requires the eject.js file. Oh, wait. Nope. Lost it. Oh, wait. Because this is an async function. Eject is an async function. So. Uh, config constant. Hmm. Man, I'm really gonna. Oh wait, hold on. This doesn't exist. I wonder. If... Oh gosh, if that was the problem. Oh. Hey. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, that's not totally great but actually that is actually really great what am i talking about so now fs.read file sync config content give us a big blob uh nope apparently not read file sync uh all right, again, we're just gonna try things because we're developers and it costs very little if we break anything. So I'm, so yeah, So for those that weren't following last week, I learned that uh, when you re write file sync, first argument is the path you're writing to, the second part is the string. So now that that's done, let's try again. Okay, so no error, so that's a win. Uh, now the question is, of course, did it actually work? Okay. That actually, that's a win. Okay. So what we have done is we figured out, we've successfully got the path, um, here, which is great. Oh, 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 silly me. Okay. Got it. Config path cons config content and then we reading the config path great all right oh my gosh i'm be so happy this works oh yes oh that is exciting all right hold on let's make sure Let's make sure that that wasn't uh, like, I don't know, magic. All right, no docs. Deleted. And yes. Oh, this makes me very happy because now my, now I don't have to leave gigantic blocks of ugliness. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Okay, great. Ah, this is exciting. Okie dokie. Uh, do, do, do. Can wipe that out now. All right, so now we've successfully, actually, you know what? You know what? I got to remember. We have we've done, we've done something good here. <laughs> so we're going to commit this work. Uh, so we've updated this to... I... I... I Yep, I'm gonna, this was a feature as far as, uh, no, refactor um, that allows you to um, manage uh, config in a separate file. Okay, oh, this opens just up, this opens up so many doors now because now really, I mean, again, I imagine there is a, um, we can find ways to be more effective about, and effective about this. Maybe someone even knows a better way than doing this, but it does work and that is the start. So um, now that we have this, we should probably uh, start taking a look at actually what we want inside a config file for the template. So the, when we load the page, um, 
Yep, so I called it a ViewPress starter kit, but I'm I think really just I'll just call it a ViewPress uh, site. That's really all it all this is. And um, great, although now I'm super confused. What am I running locally? Oh, oh, oh! I was gonna say I was so confused. Um, sorry. So the reason why I was confused is because it was. I'm running the docs from the actual ViewPress, and so that's why I was like, why did all the logos and stuff suddenly show up? And uh, it's because, yeah, so it's because it's already, it's point, I was running like the, the wrong script. So uh, I had run, run Yarn Dev before, and what I really wanted to was just to basically watch the TypeScript and just sort of recompile and just all the utilities and stuff. So rather than Yarn Dev, I believe I just want Yarn TSC, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So uh, give me that, let me start this again. Now Yarn TSC should be working great. I will Yarn Dev from this local environment, which is what I actually want. Great. So now if I refresh, great. Okay, now it's broken as expected. So uh, a couple of things. We know that we want the, I guess actually let's go the other way. So this is the beauty of it being in a separate file. Now that if I want to go to the config.js, I can go ahead and modify this and I'll just be able to copy it over later once I'm all done. So ViewPress wise, um, again, when someone starts up a new, the whole idea of this starter kit is to make it much easier for people to just like, oh, I want to update this like ViewPress site H1, then they can just like search for it inside their config, it would show up and then people can just go in and change stuff. So the idea here is to uh, really make it as simple as possible uh, for people to find what they need. So just to be even a little bit more explicit, I'm actually gonna call it the site title, uh, just because it comes up here, it comes up here, it even comes up here. So this is more accurate to what config they'd be looking for. Uh, this is your page description is great. Uh, you know what though, instead of page, it's really the site description. Uh, technically, because I, I believe this may even play into the metadata. Nope, I lied. Uh, in that case, description here is a little miss, little of a misgiving. But okay, it's really the page, home page description. Uh, this is your main page, landing page. I think everyone knows the term landing page. Okay, let's do a couple other things. One, we wanna let them easily have a logo. So uh, again, this is a ViewPress default, so there's no reason we shouldn't just give them the ViewPress logo. So I am just going to grab it once I figure out where the logo lives. I'm in default theme, components, global components, layout, styles, util. Where is the ViewPress logo? Uh, do, do, do you press icon dot? No, that's inside the art. That's too far. Oh, come on. The docs have it somewhere. Do, do, do here. The docs, here the docs, you press images logo. Per oh, wrong one. Public hero. All right, there you go. There's our little view press logo. Let's copy that and all right. So this will be a couple. So we'll learn a couple of things in this. We want to scaffold a couple of things. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, this is actually a good exercise. So they're going to want to know that there's a public directory in which they can drop images. Now, granted, we can talk all about like image optimization and whatnot. But again, uh, our goal is really here is zero to one. So we have this hero now here, uh, hero PNG there. Uh, Gosh, I realized the copying I'm gonna wanna do maybe even more complicated. Okay, hold on, don't get ahead of myself. So uh, we can now update the logo config to actually just, I'm gonna, yeah, no, I like view press logo. That's very explicit. You don't, it's the likelihood someone wanting to, that would have their own view press logo they're trying to upload is basically slim to none. Great. Okay, already looking much better. So this is a good default. We have that coming in. They would see immediately that if they're looking that this one image actually updates two different places, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it's, you know, um, okay. A couple of other things we want to show off. Let's see. Uh, 
basic page, right? This doesn't exist. So this sample docs repo needs to actually create a file, call it basic page.md, and then uh, we'll say my basic page, and then let's generate some lorem, great. So now uh, if I refresh, yes, that won't work. The reason for that is because it needs to be, gosh, should I, is that really what it did? Hmm. Let's see. Navigation wise. Oh yes. I don't, uh, basic page. Okay. They just call it basic. So I'll call it basic.md. Okay. With that. Okay. Much better. Okay. So here, here. Okay. So this allows people to see that they can just create the readme, uh, sorry, basic here. Um, the one thing I'm going to try to do here, which may break, and it's always bothered me, is go ahead and rename this at readme.md. And then uh, again, let's just break this piece. Okay, so it is working. Perfect. Okay, so that's the other thing. Um, I am not a huge fan of the readme.md. Uh, I understand it was a convention we used originally, but you can imagine most of the time when you're working a uh, page level, it really, everyone is familiar with index.html, um, having that sort of mental model of like, oh, I need a readme.md over, like, again, because readme.md for developers means a very specific thing. And um, yeah, I think index.md is a pattern that is echoed across many, many, uh, that's not simply just like a view thing, for example. So anyways, great. So I'm already liking this a lot more uh, because we know that basically these things, uh, we can sort of keep scaffolding this out. So we have this now, we have a basic section. Okay, so here's the section introduction, great. So I'm basically trying to teach people about how to do drop down. So uh, calling it section and then giving it different headings that allow you to drop into it. So this means that this is going to need to create a section folder. And then this is going to need to create a, an index.md path. And we're going to need two specific things. We're going to need uh, to do, to do, do. We need the section introduction, uh, which we can do like this. And then we'll generate some lorem. Right. And then we will go ahead and do some more content and do some more lorem and great. Okay. Uh, so if it works as anticipated, section introduction works and it jumps you down to some more content. Uh, okay. So far so good. Contact Twitter email. I think this is actually kind of silly. I don't think anyone needs me to scaffold that. Once they learn how to do the drop down, they can figure out themselves how to do that. So I'm not going to bother with that. Although I just broke it. Whoops. Okay. So that's good. Um, so I had a component example before that allowed us to show you like what it was like with the view component in there, but that was more for demo purposes and less so for like, uh, like sort of what most people will need. So again, I'm not going to try to bloat, uh, people's sort of s starting page. So yep. Um, the only thing though here is I want to show off a couple of things, uh, in the section, just because, uh, when it comes to the section, uh, uh, let's see one, um, it's a little weird that it's not showing the page title. And I th think that's because I think, let me just make sure that I'm, my gut is correct. Nope. It's not showing that intuitively. Uh, oh, this is the title. Mm? Okay. So this did update this title up here, but it didn't actually show the H1, which is bothering me a little bit. I guess because it's assuming, you know what? Take that back. No, actually, that's that does that that, that does make sense. Um, my section. Uh, do do do. Great. Okay. 
We want to show the sidebar so people can see that. And so you can see we can jump down. Great. And then uh, I might as well actually show off then like a third level. This is third level content. And then let's generate some lorem here. Uh, drop that. Great. So this is third level content. So you can see that. So we can jump. Okay. Um, I think those are the big things things right now. Uh, so if we can get people creating just this, I think this is fairly, oh, you know what? Nope, I'm wrong. A couple more things. Uh, we want last updated to show up, uh, which we'll go ahead and pull in. We want actually want this configuration just automatically on. Uh, repo is a little trickier in edit links. Uh, these are harder because this basically, basically we need to pull in their repo and we need to know where their docs are going to live. And so while the CLI could certainly be opinionated or enforced, I don't want to call it enforced. We certainly like, I imagine there's an intelligent way to like when you I don't call it run the create command. I would theoretically, we'd have access to your package.json. So we could check for the repo link. So in case anyone's not familiar with what I'm talking about, um, you most of the time inside your, uh, let me do local. Oh, well, okay. Sometimes no wait. Hold up. Hold on. Hold on. I, I know it. I'm, I'm not crazy here. Uh, so for example, here, in my like personal site, you'll see that inside my package.json. Nope, I'm crazy. <laughs> um, sometimes I've seen people put a repo in here, I swear. Nonetheless, um, that's beside the point. Let's open back up my ViewPress workspace. Okay, never mind. So uh, basically, reverse engineering what your repo is is at least not obvious up front. Uh, given that, what we do want to do then is go ahead and let's figure out if we can wrap up this feature because I think, as far as zero to one goes, this is a far better setup for people um, than we had before. So I want to be able to make sure that we can scaffold this whole thing out for people uh, once that is. So I think the easiest way to do this is to let's go ahead and reveal in Finder. Great. So this whole docs directory, this is what I'm going to want to copy into my template directory. So I'll reveal in Finder just because, I don't know, sometimes I find the VS Code file manager a little finicky. All right, so we have that. Um, yep, we can drop that in here. Uh, I'm already feeling like there's gonna definitely be some sort of uh, optimization here, but uh, one thing at a time. Okay, so, and yes, this is good. Okay, so this is the config template we want to actually modify. Um, so actually I realized, so these all need to go. Uh, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Why is it yelling at me? ESLint signal quote, fine. Uh, all right, whatever. I'm just gonna wrap this up real quick. All right, great, that's our config. Um, we have our basic files. Let's see. So docs. So we have our index dot dash template. We have our basic template. Uh, View press logo. Yeah, this will be interesting if I actually get this right. Okay. So. Oh, this is kind of funny. Uh, I'm just going to call it section index. Uh, no, it's fine. Oh, that kind of bothers. Yep. Yep. It's going to bother me. 
So uh, what I'm sort of hemming and hawing about is, in case you didn't notice, there would be two index template.mds. And while it is certainly a little overly ver verbose, I do think being overly verbose, especially when it comes to people jumping to your code base for the first time or trying to understand what you're doing, um, it just helps them easily identify what the heck is going on. So, uh, yep, yeah, we got a couple of things to do. So let's make sure. So we have the config, which we'll leave in here. Leave, wow, live. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, let's just do this. Let's just get this working. So we have our index path, which is going to require resolve. Oh man, this is going to, nope, nope, just, I have a habit of trying to optimize things in advance, which I'm sure many of you can relate with. And I am trying my darndest not to do that. Okay, and I also just realized a small improvement we could do, but one thing at a time. Uh, okay, so index path, const index content equals fs.read file sync index path, right? Easy enough to understand. Um, and then we can fs write file sync. Uh, we can scaffold the path that they currently want. And then I think that's it. I just wanted to index.md and then index content. I think that should do it. All right, so here I want to tell them they created the config file. And I have another, I thought I had another thing creating the readme file. Oh yeah, holy smokes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, uh, I don't, yeah, I'm deleting this thing now. So that's good. Okay, so let's do this. We have this magenta, I, yellow reads fairly easily on the black terminal. So let's do that. Um, this is the config file the home and the file. Okay, great. So now if we yarn uh, create docs. Oh, I just screwed up a little bit. Uh, that's fine. Docs, view press, index.md. Okay, that works as expected. So again, uh, so Already, I imagine some of you are thinking like, well, this, like easily already, this is like, already we see this repeated. We're gonna do this multiple times. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of refactoring right now, actually. So in the template, we're gonna actually, this is where I will do, template.json, I'll call it create template.json. Okay, that's what I'm gonna call it. And although this needs to be an X, you know what, I'm gonna make it a JS just because we are just do the module exports, since that seems to be the most reliable thing. Uh, so what I, the reason I'm thinking this is because we basically want to be able to loop through and resolve this piece and then write. So we just want to consistently be able to do that in a loop and just go through each uh, item. So in this case, I'm just going to make it an array for now. And we're just going to go through every single one. So we knew we need the path and then destination, yeah. So we'll have, uh, so in every single one, we'll have a path, uh, we'll have a destination, and then uh, path, destination, and message. I think that'll be good. Why is he yelling at me? New line required, sure. Okay, so, using what we have here can go ahead and take that 
we will take this and we will take uh, this piece, whoops, and we'll take that piece, that piece, and that piece. All right. So let's see. So we have first one is we've successfully created this. Um, all right. So the home index HD file, that's what we know. This is the destination. Uh, although I would really prefer, I think this will be better for reasons I'll show I'll explain in a little bit. Um, and then the path here is going to be this template conf index template. Okay. So we know that view press template is consistent. So I really should be just doing this, I think. This will tell it enough, I think. One, two, three. Yep. And then, so again, path, destination, message. So we want to create the config file. We want the destination to be here. All right, so no magic there. And we want the path to be this config template. So again, I'm gonna, we're gonna say we assume these two things, these neat commas. All right, great. So now we have these two things. Now I wonder, all right, let's see if this, okay. So now I'm gonna module dependencies. We can say const, uh, right, create template. Mm, okay, I don't know if I like the name of this, but we're gonna go for it, okay. And then create template now should exist here. And if I log it out, I'm hoping that we get our array. Uh, nope, not, oh, okay, 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 good, 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 good. All right, we got an array, great. All right, let's refactor this a little bit. So uh, we're gonna do, um, create template, and then we're just gonna do for each. Um, uh, for each template object, template item. Again, I err on the side of being verbose. Always err on the side of being verbose, especially when working on open source things just to make it a lot easier. So we have our template item, and for each template item, we're gonna go ahead and look at its path. So we'll require resolve um, template item. Oh wait, we'll try this. And then we will, the content will be fs.readfilesync of the path. And then we will go ahead and write file sync. Uh, okay, so this is where we have the scaffold path and then this is why I didn't want to include the backslash is because it just reads more intuitive, intuitively if we can do template dot destination here. So should, this reads better rather than like if I include the backslash inside of each one, it just reads, it does look a little funny here. Okay, so we know, wait. Oh, okay, this is the destination, right? This is the content that we're writing. And then if it's successful, console.log chalk, I'm gonna do green. And then uh, then the message we're passing is template.message. Again, we can probably do things to optimize this, but one thing at a time, uh, console.error log error. 
Okay, and uh, yep, that's not gonna work because I need a template item. I did the message, I did the destination, but this seems lacking. What did I do wrong? Ah, uh, yes, template item dot path. There you go. Okay, one, two, three. So if I comment this block out now, I should theoretically get two success messages. Okay, okay, fingers crossed. Nope. Okay, it's not the worst thing though, because it cannot find config template.js, which is probably okay. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, okay, so the conflict temp config template. Oh, view press template. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. That's what I forgot to do. Okay, I intentionally so originally I had the uh the directory, like the view press last library, but it seems like this it reads just a little bit more I don't know. It, it, this is a definitely a question of like what's better. Uh, you theoretically, okay, so again, just to understand, we theoretically can put this here in the path in front of every single one. Um, it might actually be better ultimately, or uh, I could just ex I can make that like a constant outside of it and then refactor it that way. It's just managed in one place. Uh, so you know what? I think that is the better path rather than sort of inlining it. Uh, it gives sort of one single source of truth for where the path is. So again, I need to tell it where it's coming from. So let's do a const um, repress template directory. Uh, actually, I don't need to say, I'll just say template directory. That should be adequate for explanations. And it will be viewpress slash template. That's it. Uh, and then Yes, I think that'll do it. And then we can template directory. And then following the same convention I was saying, just so that we don't have to include the slash here, it looks here, it just reads a little bit more normally. So let's do that. Oop. Okay, let's see if this works. Ah, oh, yes, okay. So we got success messages. That's, that's not, doesn't, we won't know until we actually check, but okay, this is good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, great, I have some things, I have concerns about some naming things, but not going to be concerned about that right now. What we want to do next now is finish up our work here. So our create command totally worked as uh, this is much cleaner now. Uh, so basically inside of our create template JSON, we're going to go ahead and loop through and then just create it. If we get any errors, log those errors. So um, this is great. Yeah, I wonder if the right, actually, I don't even know if I need this stuff up here now that I'm thinking about it. But okay, one thing at a time. Okay, so we have this now. We do our config, we do our index. Uh, do, do, do. Uh huh. Then the next thing is our section template, right? So. This is section slash, wait, template directory. Okay, right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the root rather than in a directory for now um, because I think that'll be a little bit cleaner. Um, although theoretically we'd want it easy. For, like we basically just wanna copy the, like this is a little refreshing. You kinda just wanna be able to copy the directory 
into the folder, but since I haven't figured that out yet and I'm after a zero to one concept so that people can actually be productive, that is really just an optimization from like a maintainer perspective. And that's oftentimes one of the hardest things um, you have to do is like make those trade-offs. I know that like right now, like what I'm doing, I already know this is not like, this is not the best way to do it, no way. But, um, but what I can certainly do is um, make sure, try my best to deliver value um, for the people using ViewPress. So again, section index.md file. Again, this is not great messaging, but one thing at a time. Uh, okay, let's see if even that just works now. So um, there's a reason why I think it might not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, right, so it's saying Oh, right, I, I moved it out already, okay. Yep, no such file directory open. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Uh, the reason for this is because, again, the node pe people who do node a lot could probably tell me this, but uh, you'll notice that here, I actually have to create the directory in advance. So, um, again, it seems a little bit out of order to do this, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and again, we're just gonna create a section directory. And then like this. Now, if you run it, it should work. Great, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just for a little bit of readability purposes, I really, the blue on black is really hard to read. And I know at least, I'm pretty sure most developers are running on some sort of dark theme so i'm gonna make that a little bit more friendly to that all right knowing that now looks like we successfully scaffolded those things so docs now contains an index contains a section contains a config great now what it doesn't have is the image like this is like this is a moment of truth um and so I'm actually going to go ahead and have it create the public directory too uh, in here. So the moment of truth is I need to be able to copy in um, the, the image, the ViewPress logo image. And so let's see, following the same convention I'm doing right now, I'm currently just going to drop the ViewPress logo inside of here. And just for the sake of naming convention, this is the template logo, so I don't want to confuse it with other ones. Uh, so maybe I should have just prefixed everything with template, but again, we're getting into optimization at this point. So let's just, so ViewPress logo template.png. And then our destination is going to be dot view press slash public slash um, womp womp. view press logo dot png. And our message is successfully created press logo image. Okay, fingers crossed. Here goes nothing and go oh did it work did it work ah uh, magnificent yay okay so let's just make sure we're good here all right so delete you know once you build something that works you just you just gotta make sure you see it all right you see here right no no directory and boom, here it is. All right. And if we now yarn dev, it's gonna go through. Ah, oh, yes. That's what I'm, uh oh. That's not good. Okay, that works. Mm, may want some tests, but one thing at a time. Why did base not work? Oh, yeah, because I never wrote a script for that. Uh, right, they're still the basic ones. So let's just do that one real quick. 
And I think we're actually good at this point. Uh, basic empty file. Create it. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually optimize this a little bit. This is the home page. Uh, create a home page. This config file is fine. Basic page. Create a section page. Okay, and logo image. That's fine. All right. One more time. We arm RF docs. We yarn dev. It should break because there's nothing there. Great. There's nothing that exists. Yarn create docs. Magic and yarn dev. Dev docs. Okay, itty itty. And it works. Wonderful. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. So, a um, couple things. Uh, all right, so that, with that, now in a very good place. Um, So we will call this a, this is a feature, um, basically at remaining scaffold for first iteration of, uh, of create command. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, right. I forgot we have a, um, Little commit is in to double check our messages. And apparently, I prefer just typing out the word feature personally. Um, I know it saves us three characters, but it's just personally would prefer just typing it out. Okay. I think that's that. Um, the other thing we probably need to do. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So with that, I think we can push this. Oh, you know what? I didn't do. Normally, I'm really good about this, but it's uh, totally forgot. Uh, do, 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 do. So it looks like you just have some comments as far as the scaffolding. Um, interesting. Okay, so we're learning now that there's this that people have used, but So you're using a generator to create this fun stuff. It looks like actually maybe this work has been done in advance. Cool. I mean, if it works, honestly, that's great because this is not surfaced in the docs and I wasn't even aware of this. Um, so shame on me. Uh, all right, let's just try this then. Um, I'm actually really curious. So he's saying yarn create view press. That's it. Okay. Yarn create view press um, CLI generator test. If this works. Again, not a lost cause. It was fun just sort of getting to explore Node.js stuff. Okay, boilerplate. Hey, okay, this is actually promising. Docs. Great. Test. Test at email.com. Then, oh, good, okay. Not applicable, does this work? So see, I generally went through, copied, great. CLI generator test code. This scaffolded together the latest view press. Oh, interesting, it's stuck though. That's really interesting. Um, this is not great, but that's fine. Dev docs, docs, view press, components, 
demo component, other component. Well, okay, great. I mean, hey, it looks like there is something. So um, I'm a little surprised we don't do a better job surfacing this, but at least I can work on this um, at another time for sure. Um, all right. Uh, okay, good stuff. Well, that was a fun exploration for sure. Um, let me see. Uh, looks like we will not be actually adding it directly into the VPress core, which I don't think would have been that weird to scaffold it. But nonetheless, I think it's great that we had that. The real thing is now to actually better surface this, uh, just because it's not, it's just not immediately obvious in the docs. So I'm um, glad there's that. I'm definitely gonna have to work on improving the experience of that going forward. But with that said, um, thanks everybody for watching today. Um, I think next week, yeah, we'll figure out what we're doing next week. I'll try to announce it and stuff going forward on Twitter, but it was a lot of fun streaming today and I will talk to you all another time. All right, take it easy.